small timber area where we saw damage. Up there, there's no booms in that way, but this is the prominent path from across here. And then you'll see it directly behind. So you behind. think it stayed on the ground that long? Um, for here, yes. And then when we got out in the green swamp, we could see where it bounced a couple areas. But the areas it touched down, it did, I mean, it leveled trees, picked up, and bounced up. Um, and the weather service is trying to follow up on that, but we flew it with a helicopter yesterday at the sheriff's office. It's like almost at the Columbus County. Almost, almost the Columbus, Columbus County, County line. So it almost cut our county, a diagonal across the county. So do we think it was just one or yes. potentially yes. Yes, just one? Yeah. And it developed so fast. I mean, it just, there's really nothing. And then it just, it just exploded within four minutes. Within four minutes, we had a tornado on the ground, which is scary. Everyone's in bed at nighttime sleeping. They didn't get a chance to respond. You know, by the time they get the alerts out, I mean, the alert went out immediately, but the storm, it, it developed and it was on the ground right away, instantaneously. So. Governor, you saw this from the air, I'm sure, some of the video. Is it is it different to see it on the ground? It, it, it's devastating, no doubt about it. It's a uh, tornado can just completely destroy uh, and, and, and can do it in such a an abrupt manner. It's it's really devastating. You know, we're used to hurricanes and we get a chance yep. to prepare for that. That's right. We have some you know, preparedness to evacuate and that's the the worst part of tornado at nighttime is that it's probably one of our biggest threats because people are in bed, and sleeping, they don't hear, they can see it. Do you need help in here, like the National Guard or somebody to help? Right now we have significant resources in here. Um, we're working with a lot of volunteer groups and trying to manage them. Uh, we did have some uh, National Guard troops that we have assigned to us that are working with on COVID on orders. We had some of them staying uh, right down the street. Um, so we, six of them actually jumped up in the middle of the night, knew it, they reached out to us, and they came here and helped us a little bit, right. which was, uh, yeah, it wasn't in their operational period, but they actually came out and helped us and kind of put boots on the ground, helped us deploy resources. Um, so right now, I think our biggest goal is working with the, the homeowners association here, trying to help manage what they have. They have a lot of people coming in now, control and making sure you know, there's no insurance fraud, there's no you know, contractors that come in, and, and basically what their needs are. And we'll meet with them again today at 3 o'clock to figure out what we've done, what we need to do. There are a lot of people who want to help, that's for sure. And that's hard. We'll take questions, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's, if you, you, get, if you guys have anything particular, you want to, this is yeah. all just incredible. Yeah, we'll come around yeah. the other side. And we'll... The far side over here is probably our most significant. So the main part for you here, when you stop here, if you look diagonal across, this is the silver car. Oh, I see that. This yeah. side, of, there's actually a foundation here with no house on it. House I, actually. I think we saw that coming in yeah. from, from across the way. Uh, this is another one. Another uh, one? Yeah, another one. So that actually took the house and threw it into the other one. Unfortunately, a couple that lived in it from the parish. Um, the homeowner, the house that it's on top, they made a settlement and moved in their house two weeks ago. So both houses were destroyed. Oh, wow. And if you even look at the trees, you can see the trees are stripped as yeah, far as you can see. But this is the, you know, the, the core of the damage right in this pathway right here. Yeah, we saw the trees where they just took the top. Yeah. They just took the top off the trees. Uh, and even the home here, you see a lot of damage. But if you were able to walk to the backside, it basically sucked everything out of the house up to the back wall. It just took everything right away. Um, it's, it's scary how powerful it is. Can we walk up there? Yeah, it it's a little. Yeah, yes. Just watch if you're walking, nails, anything. Yeah. see the force uh, flying from the air you could actually see part of the greens where it actually stripped the green it basically took the grass and everything else. Wow. So, but. Okay. You can walk up, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that so if you're well it's just driving Sure. 
We've already started to work and trying to get things squared away. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, and we had people showing up yesterday waiting to get in, and the hard part was trying to make sure it was safe enough for them to get in, and that right. was our biggest challenge. Yeah, we, right. think people, you know, we want to get it fixed, we want to get people back to make it short and safe. As you can see, we have a lot of a lot of hazards here. So, so were most of the people in this community permanent residents, or did you have some vacation yeah. Yeah. in here? And, we, uh, and mostly retirement. It's yeah, probably 80% of the population communities are uh, retirement age. Uh, yeah. That's a large community. So, you know, we had the damage here, but if you look how big the community is, you know, this is going to change back a little bit and it could probably work. Yeah. Well, everybody, complimentary of the work you guys have been doing. Thank you. So, do we want to go and look at another area? We're probably going to stay here. Okay. The other area, they've had two fatalities in and the families are trying to give them more space today. So. Maybe I'll walk over here. Yep. something to be thankful for these days yep. so we're, we're thinking about you and hope that, that everything can be put back together so sorry about the loss of life here yeah. tragic. that's our greatest fortune that was not us this is six in breakfast so is this your house yes. yep. and so were you guys home oh yeah, yeah. we were in the home of the curtain. so what happened how, how did you guys where I, were you? I was, in, I was in bed, and I heard the hail, and at that point I said, it's time to get up. And by the time I turned my back, the doors came in and hit me in the back and knocked me down to the, to the, sofa, uh, to, the, uh, to the bed. And that's probably the only thing that helped me survive, being knocked down. 
So, we're, oh yeah, well you, had, you heard the, the hail, but the amount of time between the hail hitting and the, the noise of the wind was instantaneous. There was no I couldn't gap. I was on the living room sofa, and as soon as the hail cracked the first piece of glass, I ducked and the whole back of the house flew in. And I went for a ride, fortunately. So where, how, how far were you carried? Where were you? I was in the great room. The entire back of the house flew in. This wall here, I'm on the other side of it. Very under everything else. And I'm sure the only thing that saved my life is our porch furniture is teak. And the one chair blew in on me like a TP tent. So everything falling and throwing landed on that and not directly on me. And I swear, that's the only reason I'm here. That is amazing. Were either of you injured? Minor. Minor scratches. From I had to get a, few, get a couple I, of stitches. Yes, but considering, no, is the answer. <laughs> Bumps and bruises by comparison. Well, you have an amazing attitude about all of this. It's got to be devastating to lose your home like this. It's, uh, it's devastating, but you got to maintain a positive attitude. So we're we here. We, we have something to deal with. There are others across the street and across the golf course that don't have that good work. Do you have a place to stay? We do. Yes. The, the neighbors here, our families, the generous, phenomenal authors have been endless. So. Yeah, we have a place to stay. There are several people that had empty homes because they're not full-time residents. They offer the home to us. We have, I've had offers from New Jersey to Florida to help. So we've been fortunate. Well, I know that it's going to take a while to pick up the pieces, and probably some of this will hit you later. Oh, yeah. But uh, know that, that there are a lot of people who care about you today want to try to help in any way this amazing amount of volunteers who want to come and be a part of helping put yeah. things back together so yeah. great experience with red cross yesterday they helped a lot so national guard was local right outreach it's just yeah national guard the sheriffs the the state sheriffs troopers did phenomenal unbelievable yeah absolutely phenomenal. well you have good local government uh, sheriff emergency responders here and coordinate well with the state so uh, don't ever want to have to be needed but when they are they're ready to go <laughs> my dad would want to know if you are a Wake Forest person actually our daughter is an alumnus of Wake Forest so great but for, yes <laughs> We footed the bill. How's that? Does that make us Wake Forest? That, 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 absolutely. Uh, knowing Wake Forest bills, that does make you. Actually, make you these a demon three deacon. homes are all Wake Forest alumni. How about that? Yep. Great. Yeah, we have the Wake Forest alumni and the cul de sac of Kathy's. <laughs> well, this looks like a lot ahead of you. So thank work. you for giving us a few minutes of your time. It's such a such a difficult time. For sure. Okay. Thinking about you guys. Thank you. Good night. Thanks for getting up late.
Thank you, ma'am. Turning this off. You guys are rock stars. Thank you so much.
so much for the pole came with and everybody came along. So I don't know what that was about. I mean, every single media was there. They were just stepping all over each other. Stuff all over 904. Hmm? That stuff is all over 904. Oh, right there. I don't know if it's part of a roof or a shed or something.
Look at that. It's sort of static. You got ready? You're okay with this back there with me? If you better without it, yeah. Yeah, if you just have to yell, you have to yell. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I think he's got to check on the generator here. Hey, Will? So you, you okay. want to open it up or you want me to do that? You're good, sir. Okay. Good. So we've come to Brunswick County today to uh, visit people who've been hit so hard by this tornado. I just want to commend the first responders, emergency management, uh, the sheriff's department, the state resources. We had highway patrol troopers come down and all the volunteers that have descended on this community to come together and try to help people recover and to help them deal with the aftermath of this. Our hearts uh, go out to the families of those who've lost their lives, to the person who is still in critical condition, others who have been injured, 
and in talking with people who lost their homes but are safe, they, their priorities are in the right place. People seem to be very thankful that they are alive, even though their homes are damaged and they have a lot to rebuild. I'm here with uh, Chief of Staff of Emergency Management, Will Ray. Uh, we're here also to do damage assessments to see what kind of help might be available for people here. But we're grateful for the coordination that has occurred with local and state and want to continue to help people here. So, uh, Sheriff, would you like to say a word or two? Uh, well, first, thank you, Governor, for uh, being here, and uh, thank you for all of the state resources that you have uh, sent our way. It's, uh, they've uh, certainly been very helpful. I want um, uh, everyone to know that our thoughts and prayers continue to be with those affected by this storm. Uh, it's going to be uh, a long recovery process, but um, as we have seen time and again, Brunswick County is a very strong community, and we work together to make sure that uh, uh, we get things uh, back in order and, and, and moving forward with our lives. I want to ask everyone uh, to please be respectful of those areas that have been affected by this storm. And if you are uh, not a, a resident or someone that is assisting in the uh, recovery efforts and, and um, the rebuilding process, to please stay out of those areas. Uh, the last thing we need is to be inundated with a lot of traffic and, and onlookers as people are trying to um, pick up the pieces and uh, begin the uh, recovery process. Again, I, I want to uh, thank everyone in the community and surrounding communities that have reached out to us and um, pledged their support and, and the donations they've made uh, is, is truly appreciated. And uh, again, thank you to the Governor and uh, all of those that uh, have assisted us from the state and other local agencies to um, to uh, help our citizens uh, recover from this. Uh, so thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Governor, and uh, sh thank you, Sheriff Ingram. Um, we could not have done this alone. Um, the partnership we've had in our community with emergency services, um, our fire departments, and, and the teamwork with the Sheriff's Department has been unbelievable, and our state resources. Um, it, this is going to be a community effort. Um, we have the boots on the ground yesterday in the response mode and we're transitioning to that recovery mode. We have an overwhelming um, support from our community um, to the point where you know, we're trying to figure out what they could do and manage it correctly and effectively to get the community back in together. Uh, it's a true showing of a community uh, from public safety, uh, schools to the state government, local government, to the, the mom and pop businesses that are out there trying to help and provide food donations um, and our corporations that are there ready to support the community. Uh, we got a long road ahead of us. Um, we got to be respectful for the families that are in the community. Um, and, and not only this community that was impacted, we had other areas of our county that were impacted by this. And uh, you know, we want to make sure we give them the proper help um, and not overburden them. Um, we do have resources in place for uh, as far as trying to find housing, um, relocation, uh, food service, mental health service is a big thing. Um, so anybody that needs help, feel free to reach out to us and we'll direct them. If you know a family member, get a hold of us. Um, but like I said, this is a community effort. Um, let's show everyone how strong we are as Brunswick County. And I said, I'm proud to be here as part of Brunswick County and lead this effort. Um, but we'll get through it with the support of our partners and we'll get our community back together. But thank you and uh, thank you, Governor, for coming out today to, to share your support. Thank you. We know this community knows how to come together. Uh, I was here not too long ago when Hurricane Isaias hit and uh, was so devastating uh, to, to the Brunswick County community, but people have pulled together and work to recover from that and they'll they're they are resilient will recover from from this as well we'll now open it up for questions and i know, and will I know there be, um, financial help for this area and, and in what form well already the state has provided resources with state highway patrol and and other efforts but what has to happen is a damage assessment to see what the area would qualify for and that's what is occurring right now Governor Cooper, we've been through the, pand um, the pandemic has been lingering and lingering and lingering, and now you have people that are facing this situation. What message would you share with them? So I know that this is a difficult time for everybody because of this pandemic, and then to have a storm of this magnitude on top of that just adds extra burdens to communities. But what we've seen here already 
are people of faith, people who understand the importance of being good neighbors. And it's been amazing to see people pull together. Uh, you, you, a number of people that I talked to just talked about how close-knit this community is and how they want to reach out. The Homeowners Association is working. So uh, we, we can pull together and we can be resilient and we can get through this. And our prayers do go to the families who've lost loved ones. That's a, a devastating situation, I know. Other questions? Is the state aware of an issue with the KLRX radar? Um, it's a local weather tower that helps predict severe weather. It's something that NOAA's been going after for several years. Is the state aware of this? Will, do you know anything about that? Uh, I'll let you. Um, our, our team at um, at State Emergency Management is engaged with the, both the National Weather Service and NOAA, um, and we will certainly go back and look at that with our team specifically on if, if there are any issues or concerns there, but we'd certainly be happy to take those at this point. And along those lines, Governor, what's your reaction to knowing that there was very little response, like when the, by the time the tornado touched down, there was very little time to react? So I know that there are continued efforts to improve the warning system for weather-related events. Tornadoes are probably the hardest to predict and to, to know where they are, and particularly one like this that's in the middle of the night when pe most people have, have gone to bed. So I think what needs to happen is people need to look at what happened here and learn from it and see if systems can be improved to try to give people as much warning as possible. I know that there has been uh, extensive improvement over the years in tornado warnings and the ability to predict, but with these tornadoes, they, they, they come and they touch down and they're sporadic, so they're very difficult to, to, to track. Governor Cooper, can you um, confirm that the warning that went out was actually after the fact? I, I am not aware of that, and I don't know if anybody else knows the answer to that question. And I do know, uh, talking to our partners at the Weather Service, um, and living about two miles from here myself, uh, talking to our partners, the event really was nothing, and this storm rapidly and back, it was really a small cell, um, no warnings, no watches, anything, and within a matter of four minutes, this went from nothing to rapidly intensified into a tornado. Um, so, you know, just watching it straight on, uh, they did their best to get the warning out. Um, I know I heard the first crack of thunder about two and a half miles away from here. From that to the storm intensifying with seconds to the, the lightning, the wind and everything, and being able to hear uh, the roar of the tornado um, two and a half miles away. Um, so I think they did their best job they could. Um, and it just was a freak storm that developed so fast we had no, no chance to respond. It seems like it was just here. I mean, it just sat down here yes. and then it disappeared. Um, we that tracked it yesterday with the work of the sheriff's office. Yeah, um, it, it, we flew it. And yeah, it was a. Uh, it, it set down just outside of this community, the first sign of where it touched down. And after this community, it traveled on beyond uh, 17 and on through um, several miles, uh, at least 20 miles. We tracked it by look from the air where you can see where it continued to hit and um, destroy trees and property through those areas. Um, fortunately, it was uh, not a place that uh, anyone was living, um, it was mostly rural areas um, through pine forests and stuff that way so we were very fortunate in that way but it did travel quite quite a distance and all the search and rescue people they've all have they spanned out throughout the area to be sure that everybody is accounted we, for we have all yep. of our resources have made sure that um, everyone's been accounted for and we've um, uh, engaged those that have been affected by it Thank you. i did have one resident who told me that uh, that people were knocking on his door rescue personnel and responders and sheriff's deputies were knocking on his doors just minutes after the tornado uh, happened so that's a that's a positive response trying to check on people and making sure people are okay so. is commissioner Causey here is he here I, I thought he was here a little earlier other questions all right thank you, all right. Thank you guys thank you. appreciate it so, so there are no more missing people. No. No, yeah. no, you guys have got a lot of work to do, and uh, I know Will and Mike Slager will work to 